right, folks, uh, welcome into today's media availability. We're joined now by Flames starting center Tom Sargent, who started his 50th consecutive game this past weekend uh, against the Old Dominion. Flames are 3-0. and Tom, uh, how does it feel to, to be winning some ball games here and be off to a fast start? Feels good. Uh, I think our team's been doing well. Um, I think for the offensive side, um, I think last week was a better game for us as a whole. Uh, we put a lot of stuff together that we've, been, that we've been messing up in the past. I think, but there's still there's still some things that we can work on um, as the offense, just executing better and um, having all 11 guys do this, you know, what they're supposed to do at the same time. Because sometimes, you know, when there's a busted play, it could be one or two guys just not doing what they're doing. But I think that just comes with practice and us working together. And I think this week, you know, we're, we're hoping to make sure all 11 guys are doing what they're supposed to at the same time. I think it's important this week. You guys got back to some tempo offense this week. Uh, Coach Freeze mentioned on, uh, I think, the coaches show Monday that you guys as an O-line really enjoy running that. Why is that? Yeah, um, for us, tempo is awesome because, uh, for one, for one, uh, it gets the defense on their heels. Uh, when we're able to push the tempo for them, it gets them super tired to where they you know, can't sub. Uh, certain people out when they get tired. So it makes things a little bit easier on us when we're going tempo. And we're, when, when we're used to that tempo, because we, you know, we work the tempo every day in practice. Um, so while we may, may be a little you know, tired towards the end of the drives and tempo, we just know that you know, the defense and the D-line is a lot more tired because they're not used to that tempo. Uh, but tempo is a good tool for us. Um, and that's what Coach Freeze was, has been preaching to us, that we need to get back into our tempo because um, that's what really works for us. Last one for me uh, for the moment um, was just looking at Syracuse and their defensive line. I mean, they got some playmakers up there uh, this year and some guys that are older. Uh, DN93 looks uh, pretty good as well. Uh, just overall, what are your thoughts on what you've seen from the Orange uh, up front here and what kind of challenges you're going to have this weekend? So I think it's a lot of similar faces from last year when we played them. Um, I think that they run a lot, a lot of things um, this year a lot better than they did last year. I think they're really well coached. Um, it's what's going to be really important for us this week to be on top of uh, watching line movements and stunts. That they're a team and a D line that likes to move a lot, and that's important for us to recognize that and see that in the game. Um, but they do have some really good guys. Um, it's just we just have to be on top of our game. Let's go to John Manson now from the Sea of Red. Hey, Tom, uh, just had a couple questions for you regarding your, your career to this point at Liberty and, and everything. And I know I've, I know we've talked about this before, but you've been here so long, I, I forget. Um, I know you came in as a, uh, as a walk-on. Uh, were you a recruited preferred walk-on under C- Coach Gill? Uh, yes. So the, guy, uh, the coach who had initially recruited me was uh, Coach Wimberly. I think his recruiting area was the Richmond area, and that's who I talked to the most. Gotcha. And so, um, you know, then you redshirted your first year on uh, on the team. Uh, during that year, or, or maybe going into you know the off season, the training camp, going into your second year, did you you know at all think that you would have a, a chance to not only play but start um, at center that first game, and then um, you know we're you know, the coaching staff, uh, was it Coach Stam, I think, at the time, yeah. offensive line? Yep. Uh, were they, you know, leading you to that point? Or just take us back through that process. So, for me, after my first redshirt year, after my redshirt year, um, the, the center above me was Lucas Holder. And so, when, after that year, I think it was, um, we had learned that Coach Wagner had just been let go. And so... Uh, after that had happened, Lucas, um, he had felt, he had, you know, he had done his time here. He, you know, I think at that time he had like two or three degrees from here, and he wanted to kind of go somewhere else, branch somewhere else, and experience somewhere else. So I think he transferred to Western Illinois. Um, and when he left, it kind of opened the door for me. Uh, so that spring, uh, there was definitely competition. I think it was between, um, it's kind of like a mix of guys. It was between like me. Uh, ben Fjordelise, um and Ethan Crawford. He was in the mix there too. Um, but so when when Lucas left, it kind of uh, just opened the door for me. 
Um, and I knew that I had a shot to go in and play that second year, uh, start as a redshirt freshman. So uh, it was really important for me to, you know, make myself stand out to coach uh, Stam and just uh, be pushed by the other guys as well. Uh, and it was just it was important to make sure I knew what I was doing, um, learning the plays and knowing I could be able to run the offense. Uh, two more quick questions for me, then some of the other guys can jump in. Uh, have you always played center on the offensive line? Has that always been your spot going back to high school and before? Yeah, so in middle school, I played right guard. And then when I got to high school, uh, they wanted me to play center. And I played, I played, I think my freshman year, I played guard as well. And then it was either freshman or JV year, I switched to center and then played center all the way out through high school. And as Nick mentioned earlier, it's been 50 straight games that you started at center, which has got to be some type of record. But, um, you know, how can how can you do that? I mean, not just uh, you know being able to be in the program for so long, but you know, offensive line as Liberty's seen this year, you, you know, it's easy for guys to get banged up. But but you've been out there, you know, can call yourself the Iron Man if you want to to this point. But uh, how are you able to stay so healthy and be there each and every week? Uh, it's kind of a mix of things. I think it's important. Um, number one in the off season, um, getting your body right with Coach Dom. Um, having your body further develop helps a lot when you go out in the football field. Uh, and also getting in the training room. Um, whether you're hurt or not, getting in the training room and recovering is huge um, after, after every game and after every week. And another thing, I just I have been blessed. I mean, a lot of injuries that happen with guys, you know, you can't prevent them, uh, which, is, which is crazy. And, I, you know, I've just been blessed. God's blessed me with health up to this point, and hopefully he continues to bless me. Hey, Tom, uh, did you travel in 2016 with the team when you were redshirting? Yeah, so I traveled to all but one game, which was SMU. So I traveled to Tech and all the other away games. Do you remember that finale against Coastal when everyone seemed to be going down? And um, as, a, as a walk-on at the time, did you think, man, I've got to make sure I stay healthy in order to impress these guys and stay on that field? Yeah, so that Coastal game, I think – we were, I think, down to our last offensive lineman reserve. Uh, we were really hurt that game. I think Lucas didn't even play that game because he was hurt. Um, so I can't remember who started center. It might have been uh, Dante. Dante. Not, yeah. Dante started center. Yeah, so Dante played, and then we really hurt. And then I think towards the end of the game, Julio Lozano went down. Um, so they, I think, moved someone out to tackle and brought Devin Crispin to guard. And at that point, uh, I was the only offensive lineman on the sideline when the offense was in. Um, it didn't really cross my mind. I didn't think they would throw me out there to burn my red shirt in the last game, but I was still mentally prepared at the time to do it. And I think I found out later that they had intended for me not to, you know, if something had happened that they intended for, um, I think it was uh, Cannon, the tight end, to go in at tackle so they didn't have to burn my red shirt at that point. Tom, you know, I talked to a couple guys like Tristan last year about the mentality of guys recruited at the FCS level and playing with a chip on their shoulder uh, at the FBS level. You're a walk-on recruited at the FCS level and now starting at the FBS level. Have you carried that chip on your shoulder of, man, I'm, I'm a former walk-on and I need to constantly prove myself day in and day out? Yeah, that's always in the, you know, the back of your head, the back of your mind. Um, starting out as a walk-on, you definitely have a chip on your shoulder. You have to prove yourself. Um, coming in, um, but when I came in, I wasn't really treated any different from anybody else. Um, and you know, throughout my career, as you know, competition has gotten better, recruiting has gotten better. We've played better teams. Um, I just think it's a testament to the coaches past, the past coaches and the coaches now. You know, having us prepared for those games um, with Coach Bill and Coach Dom. Uh, I think they've done you know tremendous you know wonders in working out people. You know, developing their bodies. Uh, I think Coach Dom's done a really jo good job since he's been here, um, and that's helped a lot on the field going against better teams. Hey, Tom, when were you put on a scholarship, and how were you given that news? So it, it happened after my – so I started my whole redshirt freshman year. I think I'll, at that time we were FCS, so you could be on partial scholarship. And I think at that time 
at, from the beginning of the year, I think I was on like 60% or 30% at the time, I can't remember. And then it was that December um, after that se after that, my retro freshman year, um, I had kind of, at that point I was like, I thought I, you know, I had proved myself to that point. I had kind of reached out to Coach Stam um, to see like, you know, where the coaches were thinking on things. And it wasn't too long after that, Coach Gill had called me and let me know that they were gonna put me on full scholarship, which is awesome.